Welcome to the FTP tutorial. A few groups have already crashed their site by install installing some uh, plugins or different templates. So let me show you a quick way of how you can potentially fix that. This should work in most cases, maybe not all the time, but in the majority of cases, removing the plugin from the site uh, will help. So this has nothing to do with Windows Azure, but since it's hosted on the Azure server, we need to log in here and remove the last plugin you installed that causes the problem. That in some cases, you know, you have Asia up and running, but your website, your URL might not be uh, reachable. So when you actually go to your site, it might be completely blank. It might give you an error message. Sometimes it might just load forever and nothing happens. So, and this usually happens right after you installed a new plugin or potentially changed the template and so on. Now this happens because all these individual developers that uh, program these plugins, they test it against WordPress, but there's 40,000 different plugins. They cannot test it against all the other plugins there that you might have installed. So occasionally it can happen that you install a plugin and that particular one is not compatible with another one that you have already installed. And in most cases, you won't know until you actually install it and realize the site is gone, right? It's unresponsive and you can't reach it. So if you know what you just did, say I installed this plugin and now my, my site, I can't access it anymore. You need to log in onto the server via FTP, file transfer protocol and remove that plugin. And it's fairly straightforward is in Azure, you need to create an FTP account that is possible but not set up by default. So you click on your on your web app, in my case DC Omec, and you click on the dashboard here. Now on the right hand side, if you scroll down, you'll see FTP settings. In my case here, it already has a deployment uh, slash FTP user. In your case, most likely this will say not set up undefined and it will have a link here create FTP user and then you click that link to create it if you already have one here and you don't remember the credentials you can scroll up here and go to reset your deployment credentials it's getting to you to the same menu you'll need to create a username and then you'll need to create a password and then you have your FTP setup created. So again, whether you set this up for the first time or you just reset those credentials, doesn't matter. Now, what happens then in this case, it will set the deployment credentials here on the bottom. You see this, it takes an, you know, a couple of seconds and it's done. Now, then all the settings are pretty much here. You have FTP host name for a regular FTP or a secure transmission. You'll have the deployment user and the username is actually both. Right? And this is a backslash. So depending on what you created, you'll see here, this is the part of the Azure account. And then this is the part of the FTP user that we created. But your username for FTP is going to be both. And then the password that you just created. Now, FTP or file transfer protocol, uh, there's a variety of different uh, software tools you can use to connect to the server. I recommend you use FileZilla. It's also the recommended one by the school. Uh, you can download it for free. It's open source for Windows, Mac, and Linux, and so on. Uh, if you run into any problems with setting up the uh, program itself, the help desk in the administration building in 110 will be able to help you as well. It's their recommended uh, FTP client as well. So you download the software, you install it on your computer, and now you need to enter the information here. So, so you use the FTP host name that we have here, I copy that one, copy it into FileZilla as the host. Uh, we do have the user that we just created here. So again, this is both. And then the password that I created. And then you can simply hit quick connect. Uh, it will ask you, uh, it will tell you that the server certificate is unknown. You can trust it, you can say OK, and you're going to be connected to the Microsoft server. And now you're basically connected to your web server directly through the file transfer protocol. You'll see a couple of folders. So on the left side, that is your local 
uh, computer on the right side that's local right and on the right side you see the remote side that is the server the Azure server you're working on you'll have a folder here it's called site excuse me so you double click on this one and then you can expand this here with the file names and you'll see there is the www root and that is where your website is located so you click double click on this one as well and now you're on your server directly right? so I can enlarge this here now you this is where your website is and you see all the WordPress files uh, installed if we didn't use the brand new WordPress script this is the way of how we would have connected to the server and just upload the WordPress files and uh, install them here and, and configure the uh, WP config file so in our case the plugins are in the WP dash uh, content uh, folder so double click here and you'll see a subfolder plugins and now you'll double click that as well and you'll see all the plugins you have installed so if you have an unresponsive site after you install the plugin you got to remember what was the last uh, plugin you installed hopefully uh, if not you might have to install two or three so you don't have to um, you, have, you don't have to um, remove all of them but if there is uh, the one, say in my case, potentially, if I would say, oh, the broken link checker plugin was the last thing I installed, uh, and since then the site became unresponsive, you can right click here and just delete the entire directory for that plugin. Once you've done uh, that, usually then, uh, you know, again, maybe give it a minute, and if you refresh your page, then chances are it's going to be back up and uh, alive and kicking as it was before you installed that plugin if that's not happening um, you could go back and see you know maybe there was another plugin you installed as well maybe try a second one worst case uh, you can remove all these plugins uh, and you'll also see here if uh, maybe it was a template that you installed so again the plugins add the functionality to the wordpress website the themes are the ones that give it the appearance and so on and some of these themes can cause incompatibilities as well so if you installed an additional theme here and since then it became uh, unresponsive you might uh, remove that theme as well so you can't do much damage here uh, as long as you stick to the themes and the plugins right so the content on your site the posts the pages they will remain in the database Right, they're still going to be there. It's just that maybe the functionality of that plugin is uh, going to be removed or that theme is removed and then the site reverts back to a default um, theme. So uh, you can uh, do that without any fear, uh, but uh, you know, stick to the themes and the plugins. You don't want to go back and remove any other files here in, in uh, uh, some of the other folders because that could uh, affect the site and render it useless and then we'll have to reinstall it. So hopefully that fixes the problem and then uh, you can just log back in and you know maybe try the installation of that same plugin again and uh, see if it works and if you get the same error message again you just uh, remove it again from the server here and then you know for sure it's that one. Now if that say was a database backup plugin well then you'll have to search for another one that might be compatible with your site and the uh, specific setup and other um, plugins and configurations that you have in place. Um, hopefully that helps. Um, good luck and uh, have fun with your sites. Thank you.